Hello everyone, welcome to Camp 76A. Today we will begin chapter number 3. In this chapter we will learn about stereoisomerism and chirality. So in this chapter we will learn what is uh, chirality and uh, what is stereoisomerism and then we will uh, learn about a system uh, of naming chiral centers. So the system is known as R and S uh, system. So with this system we can uh, identify what kind of chiral centers are present in our organic molecules. Then we will discuss about uh, how to assign R and S configuration to our molecules and then we will learn about various terminologies which are used and then we'll discuss about optical activity and finally we will discuss about the uh, significance of chirality in the biological uh, system such as living organisms, enzymes and so on. So let's uh, begin uh, this chapter. The term isomer came from the combination of Greek words isos and meros, which means uh, made up of same part. Therefore, isomers are those compounds which are constructed from same atoms but are still different from each other. In other words, Isomers are different compounds with same molecular formula. In previous chapter, we have already defined the two kinds of isomers. Uh, the first one was constitutional isomer. In this uh, kind of uh, isomers, uh, uh, the molecules have different connectivity although their molecular formula is same. And second type of isomers are stereo isomers. In these isomers, the molecular formula as well as connectivity are same, but uh, the uh, orientation in uh, space is different. For example, if I have uh, these two molecules both of these uh, uh, substituted cyclohexane molecules they have uh, uh, same molecular formula however we can see that the connectivity of various groups is different so therefore these are examples of constitutional isomer and let's see uh, what are stereoisomers. In case of stereoisomers, both the connectivity as well as the molecular formula are same but the three-dimensional orientation are different so these two are example of stereoisomers in this case both methyl groups are above the ring and in this case one is above and one is below so we learned in previous chapter that these kind of molecules are called cis isomers and the other one is known as trans isomers The ability to visualize stereochemical relationships is a survival skill in organic chemistry. The chemistry and properties of uh, the key molecules of biochemistry uh, critically depend upon the stereochemistry of molecules. Uh, in this chapter, our goal is to uh, understand uh, uh, the uh, three-dimensional orientation and shapes of molecules. I strongly suggest you to purchase a set of uh, uh, models, uh, the chemistry modeling kit, 
because uh, uh, with that uh, we can easily visualize three-dimensional shapes of organic molecules which might be challenging on uh, uh, by looking at uh, an image in in a book in previous chapter we learned about cis and trans stereoisomerism but there are many other kinds of stereoisomers uh, in organic chemistry so we uh, will begin our exploration of all these various kinds of stereoisomers by investigating the relationship between an object and its mirror image any object can be viewed in a mirror and it will reveal its mirror image for example uh, imagine that we have a pair of sunglasses so imagine this is uh, a pair of sunglasses and if we place a mirror in front of uh, the sunglasses its mirror image will look uh, similar to the actual sunglasses but opposite in direction if we grab this uh, image imagine that we can pick it up and we rotate it by 180 degree okay and we can place this whole image on top of it let's imagine we do that uh, so remember we're gonna grab it and then we're gonna rotate it by 180 degrees so we're gonna flip it so if we do that our image will be exactly similar to the actual uh, object okay so let me repeat one more time so the mirror image if we can grab it rotate it by 180 degree and place it on top of our actual object they will be exactly same as each other so these kind of objects whose mirror image is exactly the same provided that we have to rotate it uh, so it will take some imagination so these kind of objects whose mirror image is exactly the same uh, they are known as uh, super uh, imposable or in other words uh, the object and mirror image are super imposable to each other so they are same now imagine that we have another pair of glasses but in this case one of the glass is missing okay so we have one side present but the other glass is missing so if we take the mirror image of this glass so mirror image will be again would look like that right now in this case if we take the mirror image rotate it by 180 degree right, and then try to place it on top you will see that the broken side is on the other end and the glass side is opposite so now these two image cannot be superimposed or in other words they cannot be merged we can see that they are different now so these kind of uh, mirror images or these kind of objects and its mirror image are known as non superimposable many familiar objects such as hands gloves are non superimposable to their image mirror images you can try it uh, you will see that they don't fit the mirror image will not fit with your actual hand the right hand and the left hand are mirror images of each other but they are not identical uh, they are not uh, superimposable so that's the reason why left hand will not fit into right-handed glove and vice versa so objects uh, such as uh, our hand or this broken sunglass 
these kind of objects whose mirror images are non superimposable to each other these kind of objects are known as chiral objects the term chiral came from uh, the greek word kere which means hand all three dimensional objects can be classified as either chiral compounds or chiral objects uh, or achiral objects achiral objects are those objects which lack chirality or in other words uh, uh, they are symmetrical uh, so it means these are those objects which lacks handedness so a chiral object has at least one element of symmetry so they are symmetrical uh, uh, along one direction at least one they may be symmetrical along more than one direction but at least one uh, symmetrical uh, direction has to be there a chiral objects may have uh, two kinds of symmetry they may either have a plane of symmetry so plane of symmetry is an imaginary plane passing through an object or molecule dividing it such that one half is the reflection of the other half for example in case of our sunglass not the broken one the actual one the plane of symmetry is right in the middle of the sunglass so this is the plane so if you see the half of uh, the sunglass uh, and the other half of sunglass they are exactly same as each other so this is the plane of symmetry the other kind of symmetry which may exist in a chiral object is the center of symmetry a center of symmetry is a point so situated that identical components of uh, uh, the object or molecule are located at the same distance from that point and an opposite side uh, from the point along any axis passing through that point uh, this definition uh, sounds um, quite complicated but i'll explain with the help of an example and then you'll see clearly what is plane of symmetry and what is center of symmetry some of the objects with various elements of symmetry are shown in this figure as we can see that in this cube we have three different planes of symmetry each plane is represented by different colors so we have a pink plane the blue one and the yellow one uh, our laboratory glassware this beaker has one plane of symmetry because of the uh, the lip here if the lip is absent then it may probably will have a multiple or infinite number of planes of uh, planes of symmetry similarly uh, this uh, uh, molecule uh, has a one plane of symmetry uh, this way so you can see the molecule half of the molecule below the plane is exactly same as the molecule half above the plane now this cyclobutane uh, molecule derivative of cyclobutane it does not have any plane of symmetry but it does have a center of symmetry because from this center point the same atom or same uh, object is equidistant from each other for example from this center the chlorine uh, atom is exactly uh, 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 opposite to each other or uh, they are equidistant similarly the methyl groups are opposite and are at equidistant so uh, and uh, uh, because this center is exactly in the middle of cyclobutane so all corner carbon atoms are also equidistant from each other so therefore this molecule possesses a center of symmetry because all of these objects possess uh, some kind of symmetry in them therefore all of these objects are achiral so all of these are achiral objects 
so all objects or molecules that lack both uh, uh, plane of symmetry as well as center of symmetry are chiral objects or chiral molecules an example of an organic molecule which possesses a plane of symmetry is shown here so as we can see that the left hand side of uh, this molecule the left hand side of this molecule is exactly same as the other half of the molecule now this kind of molecule if we place it in front of a mirror then its mirror image would be exactly same as the molecule or in other words you can superimpose the mirror image on actual molecule so if you take this image you can exactly be able to place it on top and they will fit exactly now on the other hand let's take a look at another molecule for example Now, this molecule uh, neither possesses a plane of symmetry nor uh, the center of symmetry. Uh, maybe we can visualize it, it better if I use different colors. Now, remember that the solid wedge bond means it's uh, coming out of the plane and the uh, the dashed bond means that it's going into uh, the plane. So it's a three-dimensional molecule. Now, in, if we place this kind of a molecule in front of uh, a mirror, the mirror image will be non-superimposable. So it means no matter how many degrees you rotate, the mirror image will never, never, ever fit uh, the molecule. Uh, I would suggest you to pause this video here and then imagine the molecule. If you have a kit, uh, modeling kit, maybe build this molecule, two set of these molecules, one similar to this one, the other one similar to that one, and see if you are able to uh, superimpose them but trust me on this one these two molecules no matter how much you rotate it it's never gonna uh, be superimposable so because it does not possess either uh, kind of symmetry so therefore this molecule is an example of a chiral molecule uh, the other molecule is an example of a chiral molecule the most common source of molecular chirality is the presence of a carbon atom bearing four different groups. Or in other words, the cause of chirality in organic molecule is a tetrahedral carbon atom uh, because tetrahedral carbon atom is bonded to four different groups. So for example, if we have uh, this carbon atom here and it is bonded to four different groups in tetrahedral arrangement and if we uh, take its mirror image then we will see that mirror image will be non-superimposable so if this is our molecule and the mirror image of this molecule will look So this would be the mirror image. Now you can take the mirror image, you can rotate it, whatever you want to do, you can spin it in the three-dimensional space, rotate it, but 
no matter what you do it will never be exactly same as this molecule i would like you to pause this video here and if you have a modeling kit create this model and spin this around and see if it's uh, uh, if it's possible to superimpose them and uh, trust me on this one it will never be possible so these two images are uh, or these two molecules are uh, what we call uh, chiral uh, or non superimposable uh, molecules of and uh, so they are stereoisomers of each other in 1996 IUPAC recommended that the tetrahedral carbon which bears the which bears the four different groups around it should be called a chiral center so therefore this um, carbon atom is the chiral center both of these and uh, we generally represent chiral centers by uh, putting an asterisk right next to it <clears throat> now these two molecules because their molecular formula will be exactly the same and connectivity will also be the same but however their three dimensional orientation is different from each other therefore these two molecules are known or these two are stereoisomers both of these so they are stereoisomers of each other and in case stereoisomerism is because of the presence of chirality or chiral center these two stereoisomers are known as enantiomers so enantiomers are defined as stereoisomers that are non superimposable mirror images of each other those are called enantiomers so whenever a compound is chiral it will have one non superimposable mirror image and the, it will be known as enantiomer uh, in the meaning of enantiomer is uh, uh, is opposite it's it came from the greek word uh, and it means uh, opposite and both the compound such as this one and its mirror image both are known as uh, enantiomers of each other in other words they are twins of each other so therefore we also call them pair of enantiomers so now we know what are uh, uh, chiral centers and what are enantiomers but there is another term often used in stereochemistry and that is stereocenter so let's see what are stereocenters the term stereocenter is also used to describe uh, uh, a carbon atom bonded to four different groups but it is broader than stereo uh, sorry it is broader than chiral center so let me erase this a stereocenter is uh, an atom about which uh, exchange of two groups uh, produces a stereoisomer for example uh, in case of uh, uh, cis and trans uh, cyclohexene examples we saw earlier uh, for example these two so in this case uh, both of these carbons are stereocenters because exchange of uh, uh, the group around this uh, uh, carbons produced a new stereoisomer so in other words all chiral centers are also stereocenters but in some cases a stereo center may not be a chiral center and we will learn about that uh, later or i can give you an example right now so for example if we have uh, a molecule an alkene 
we have not studied alkenes yet but uh, just to give you an example so if we have an alkene so this is a cis alkene and this is a trans alkene now in this case this carbon atom is a stereocenter why because exchange of um, uh, this group around this carbon atom has produced a new uh, stereoisomers so cis and trans are stereoisomers of each other however this is not a chiral center because for in order for this to be a chiral center it needs to have a tetrahedral geometry and we know that alkenes do not have a tetrahedral it's a trigonal planar geometry so uh, remember the difference all stereo centers may not be chiral center but chiral centers will be stereo centers so similar example is given here so as we can see if we exchange the methyl group from here to here so exchange around this carbon atom has produced a new stereoisomer so new stereoisomer therefore this carbon is a stereocenter Similarly, this will also be a stereocenter because if you swap this one here, it will also give rise to a new um, stereoisomer. However, none of these two, none of these two carbons are chiral centers because they do not have a tetrahedral geometry or they do not have four different groups around them. So stereocenters may not be chiral centers. However, if we look at this carbon now this carbon has four different groups attached to it so one side is methyl this side is ethyl then hydrogen and and hydroxide so therefore the central carbon is a chiral center however if we exchange two groups with each other if we swap hydroxide with hydrogen it will also give rise to a new uh, stereoisomer so chiral center is also a stereo center it is important to note that uh, uh, many times there are several ways to represent a same molecule for example in this case we are uh, representing 2-butanol 2 2-butanol 2 has only one stereo center uh, so this is the structure formula of 2-butanol and as you can see uh, this tetrahedral carbon has four different uh, units or groups attached to it therefore this center or this carbon is the chiral center so 2-butanol has only one chiral center however if you notice we have four different representations of 2-butanol but remember all these four representations are same they are same molecule all these uh, four different structures are different way of uh, drawing the same uh, stereoisomer all these four are not enantiomers of each other it's the same molecule Structure number one represents the tetrahedral uh, orientation around the chiral center. Structure number two is the same molecule, it's just uh, uh, that orientation is uh, flipped um, around the tetrahedral carbon. And in number three, we are not showing. Uh, the hydrogens attached to the parent chain so two and three are exactly the same and number four we are, are not showing even the hydrogen connected to the tetrahedral center but it is understood that there is a hydrogen connected here so all of these four structures show the same molecule so in case you want to draw the 
uh, enantiomer of 2-butanol, you can pick either structure, either one of these four, and then imagine what the mirror structure would be. For example, if we pick number four, so number four is here. So if you imagine that there is a mirror here, so this would be the mirror image of uh, number four. So this structure is now the in other uh, stereoisomer or enant uh, enantiomer of 2-butanol. Now these two are the pair of enantiomer. Now another thing to imagine here or remember here is that the mirror image can be also oriented in different ways. Uh, for example, we already know the meaning of uh, uh, the wedge bond is that this bond is coming towards us, right? So if we rotate this molecule by 180 degree, it will become this one, in which case uh, the ethyl group will be pointing towards the right side and the methyl group is on the left side, but the OH group now is away from us. That's why it is represented by a dashed uh, uh, bond. Both of these are same molecule. Another way of imagining uh, this kind of structure is that if we have number four representation here, instead of putting mirror on the side, so we can also place the mirror behind it. So what if, if we place the mirror behind it, right? So if we place the mirror, so imagine this is the mirror and it's placed behind it, then the image would appear behind the mirror so it would be something like this one only it would exactly be same only difference would be that here the OH is coming towards us but in the mirror OH will go away from us so these two are also mirror images of each other so they are also pair of enantiomer Although I'm showing multiple ways, but all these structures are only representing two molecules. So in other words, if a molecule has a one chiral center, it will only have two enantiomers, not more than that and not less than that. So this gives a easy method to write the enantiomer of any given molecule. All you need to do is so if a molecule is given and you want to write its enantiomer, all you need to do is draw the same molecule, just convert the wedge bond to dashed bond and these two will be pair of enantiomers. And you can do that to all chiral molecules. Two different uh, ways to draw uh, a pair of enantiomers of lactic acid are shown here. In fact, all biologically active molecules do have uh, chiral centers and we will uh, see many other examples in this chapter. Uh, but remember that one chiral center give rise to two enantiomers. So these are the chiral center and that's the mirror. If we place mirror on the side, then we get this kind of uh, structure but if we orient the molecule so these two are same molecules uh, so then the mirror image would be uh, in this way another easy way to draw the mirror image is the, the method I showed you earlier so all you need to do is convert the wedge bond into dashed one and keep rest of the molecule same So these two are also enantiomers. Similar to 2-butanol, uh, we, here we have example of 2-chlorobutane. Uh, In this case, 
the mirror is here so therefore these two are mirror images of each, each other so that's enantiomers pair of enantiomers and these are same molecule with in ball and stick method uh, another way uh, as i mentioned you can uh, use to draw is that all you need to do is you just need to replace the wedge bond with the dash and the dash bond with the wedge now these two are also represent the same of same pair of enantiomers <clears throat> In all the examples we have seen so far, the chirality arises because of the presence of a chiral center. And in all these examples, the chiral center was a tetrahedral carbon. And generally, it is the case in most of uh, the chiral compounds, there will be uh, a chiral, uh, sorry, a tetrahedral carbon which is bonded to four different uh, groups. Uh, and that will be the reason why this molecule is chiral however this is not always the case there are certain examples in which chirality arises because of some other uh, atom uh, for example in this molecule a nitrogen is the chiral center both of these uh, molecules are mirror images of each other hence and they are non-superimposable so hence they are pair of enantiomers of each other another example another interesting case is um, is in case of um, a simple alkane such as butane so for example if we take a look at butane As we can see, butane has four carbons and none of these carbons have four different groups attached to it. So in other words, none of these four carbons are chirals. So there is no chiral center. However, if we draw a Newman projection uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, the perspective of uh, C2 to C3, so our Newman projection would look something like this. And we learned in previous chapter that this uh, is a Gauche form. And then if uh, it rotates more, Gauche will eventually turn into anti. So this is anti and if it turns another 60 degree angle uh, then we will get another gauche form uh, but in that case so this is another gauche form now the gauche uh, so all these three forms uh, they are same molecule uh, their connectivity is same uh, however their three-dimensional spatial orientation is different hence they are stereoisomer by definition now let's take a look at gauche a versus gauche b so i'm going to draw it again so in case of gauche form a And if I put the gauche form B right in front, as you can see, the gauche form B is the mirror image, non-superimposable mirror image. 
therefore these two by definition are pair of enantiomer okay so what does that mean the meaning is that although butane by itself is uh, does not possess any chiral center however if we look at the Newman projections of butane we can find two uh, forms in which they are mirror images of each other as shown here so these are non superimposable mirror images so therefore they are pair of enantiomers another point I would like to mention here is that uh, the anti form and gauche form although they are stereoisomers of each other but they are not mirror images of each other it is an important concept which we will uh, again take a look at in few slides later so those structures or those isomers who are stereoisomers uh, of each other but are not mirror image those are known as diastereomers so therefore uh, the gauche form A and the anti form are diastereomers of each other however the gauche form A versus gauche form B they are enantiomers of each other but uh, butane itself does not possess any chiral center then how can uh, the gauche forms or uh, are uh, enantiomers? The answer is it really is not because uh, uh, the rotation along the carbon-carbon uh, single bond is pretty easy. So these uh, rotate rapidly and uh, uh, with times, uh, so they rotate so rapidly that they don't stay in one form. So they interconvert into each other. So overall butane indeed is achiral. Uh, but if we just uh, uh, draw these gauche forms on paper and uh, then it would appear like they are however if we are somehow able to keep one gauche form locked uh, and the other gauche form also locked which is a possibility at extremely low temperature but at room temperature we cannot lock uh, the butane conformation in one gauche form as we saw in previous chapter that the energy required is extremely low so therefore they interconvert in all these uh, Newman projection forms quite rapidly so therefore overall butane is a chiral but this discussion uh, raises an important question or important concept and that concept is that in some cases chirality can arise even if there is no chiral center so those molecules who are enantiomers of each other but they do not have a chiral center are known as atrop isomers a, a good example of a trope isomer is shown here in this case carbon atom here and here both of them are sp2 they are not tetrahedral so these carbons are sp2 so therefore it's a trigonal planar however presence of a bulky nitro groups at these positions right next to the uh, right next to the, this carbon carbon so it makes this molecule uh, locked in this uh, uh, position because the rotation around this carbon carbon axis is not possible anymore because of bulky nitro groups as well as carboxyl group so this molecule uh, has a hindered rotation so it, it stays locked so therefore the other isomer so this one it's now mirror image they cannot rapidly interconvert into each other so these two molecules are enantiomers of each other but overall the molecule does not possess any tetrahedral carbon so therefore the molecules which uh, who are enantiomers but they lack the chiral center uh, are known as atrop isomers.
so far we have discussed the fact that enantiomers exist and uh, for example these are two enantiomers of 2-methylbutane we have not considered the question of which enantiomer is which so in order to communicate more effectively we also need a system of nomenclature for identifying each enantiomer individually so that we can tell that which enantiomer are we talking about so this system is known as rs convention and this system uh, is uh, named after the chemist who developed it and this uh, <clears throat> the system was developed by a team of uh, three chemists and their names were Kahn, Ingold and the third chemist was Prelog. So therefore this system is also sometimes known as Kahn, Ingold and Prelog system. In this system, the first step involves assigning priorities to each of the four groups attached to the chirality center. Now this priority is assigned based on the atomic number. So in other words, uh, the atom with the highest atomic number is assigned the highest priority, which would be number one, while the atom with the lowest atomic number will be assigned the lowest priority uh, the lowest priority is number four so for example if i have a chiral center carbon and it is bonded to four different uh, atoms or groups so hydrogen on this side oh on that side and maybe a methyl group on this side and uh, chlorine on this side so first step says we need to assign the priority and priority is assigned based on the atomic number of uh, the atom connected to carbon so if we look at all the atoms connected to the central carbon the highest atomic number belongs to chlorine so chlorine gets priority number one after chlorine the next highest atomic number goes to oxygen now although there is a hydrogen here but hydrogen is not connected to carbon so we only consider the atom which is directly connected to the carbon so that would be oxygen from OH so therefore priority goes to uh, however the priority is assigned to the entire group although only oxygen is connected but priority goes to the entire unit so this is priority number two on this side and now we can see the remaining two sides one side has hydrogen the other side has a carbon uh, connected to the central chiral center so we can uh, assign priority number three to here because carbon has higher atomic number and the lowest priority belongs to hydrogen in organic compounds uh, hydrogen has the lowest atomic number anyway so whenever a hydrogen is connected so hydrogen automatically gets the lowest priority which is number four second rule is if priority cannot be assigned per the atoms bonded to the chiral center then look to the next set of atoms what does that mean so let me explain with the help of an example so imagine that we have a chiral center carbon and again it is connected to hydrogen on this side maybe chlorine to this side and on this side we have uh, uh, ethyl group and on this side we have only methyl group yeah. so automatically we can assign number one priority to this one because that's the highest atomic number and number four to this one because hydrogen as I explained will always be number four because it's the lowest atomic number now the problem is between the left side methyl group and the right side ethyl group how do we handle these so what we because 
in methyl also carbon is connected to the chiral center and on the right side again carbon is connected to the chiral center so they are both equivalent so whenever we encounter such a situation when both sides have a same atomic number atom connected to it then we look at what is next connected to it so this carbon is connected to hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen so apart from this bond so we don't consider this bond what other bonds uh, or, or what other atoms is connected to and the other carbon this carbon is connected to we don't consider this bond we consider rest of it so this and we arrange them uh, from higher atomic number to lower so this carbon this one is connected to carbon hydrogen and hydrogen two hydrogens and one carbon right so then we see uh, then we match if there is any preference uh, so we can see that carbon is uh, so this carbon is connected further to another carbon so therefore this one kind of wins or gets a better priority so therefore this whole side gets priority number two and this whole side gets priority number three The third rule is atoms participating in double or triple bond are considered to be bonded to an equivalent number of similar atoms by single bond. So for example, if we have And we want to assign priority so clearly this is our chiral center so we need to assign uh, priority so again chlorine will get number one priority and hydrogen will get number four priority again now the question is which side the left side gets is this side gets number two or the right side gets number two we look at the uh, the atoms connected directly to the chiral center so in both cases the atom directly connected to the chiral center is carbon that doesn't solve any question however now we will consider what else is connected to now on this side all bonds are single bonds right so this carbon apart from this bond it is connected to a carbon hydrogen and hydrogen right and on this side this carbon and it's making a double bond and it's making a double bond to another carbon so therefore the double bond is considered as two bonds or in other words equivalent bonds to another carbon so it is carbon carbon and hydrogen okay so now this carbon and this carbon are equivalent so they don't tell the priority however when we move to the next step so left side is carbon the right side is hydrogen so this gets the priority so this whole side gets a priority so that's priority number two and this entire side gets priority number three assigning priorities is an important skill to uh, figure out uh, what will be the uh, configuration of our um, enantiomer after assigning the priorities uh, to uh, all four groups connected to the chiral center we need to orient or, or rotate the molecule in such a way that priority number four is away from us for example if this is the um, molecule and we assign priorities and then we need to orient the molecule in such a way that the priority number four is away from us okay 
Okay, so priority four should be away from us. We don't care about the other priorities. They could be anywhere else. Just that the lowest priority should be away from us. And then the other priorities could be anywhere. So for example, if the other priorities are one here and two here and three here, so what we go, we igno ignoring the number four, we start from number one and we move towards number three. And if it moves clockwise, then that isomer or that enantiomer is known as R enantiomer. If number four priority has to be away from you, for example, four is away, and let's say we have two here, one here, and three here. Now in this case, starting from one, we need to move towards three. So one, two, and three. So this is anti-clockwise. If it spins anti-clockwise, we call that enantiomer S. Okay, so how do we put that to practice? So let's uh, take an example of uh, two chlorobutane. As you can see that this is uh, already S uh, enantiomer, but let's see if really it is S. So let's assign priorities. And as we learned previously, that the highest atomic number gets number one priority. So carbon, uh, sorry, chlorine will get number one priority and hydrogen is number four priority. And uh, fortunately in this molecule, hydrogen being a number four already away from us. So that's a good thing. Because sometimes if it's not away from us, we have to rotate or orient the molecule, which may be a little bit challenging, but there is a method to uh, overcome that challenge also. But anyway, let's continue assigning uh, other priorities. So in this side, we have a methyl group, which is CH3. And on this side, we have CH2. And we learned previously that we assign priorities by if a uh, uh, chiral center is connected to the same atom, carbon in this case, then we look for the next atom. So methyl is connected to all hydrogens. However, in this case, it's connected to two hydrogens and one carbon. So that additional carbon connection makes this side better priority. So that would be number two and this would be number three. So if we start, we don't, we ignore number four. Once it's away from us, we ignore it. And then we start from one and move to two and three. As you can see, it's uh, anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise is S. So hence it is a S enantiomer. And we display or we write the symbol for enantiomer in front of the name in the parentheses. For example, in this case is S2 chlorobutane. And the ball and stick method uh, better visualizes, uh, visualizes the concept I was talking about that the lowest priority, which is number four, has to be away from us. And then we see which way the going from one to three is it clockwise or anti-clockwise let's take a look at a couple of other examples while assigning the priorities and then uh, figuring out whether it's going to be an r enantiomer or s enantiomer it's it's, uh, it's extremely important to visualize these molecules in ball and stick model because in that case you will uh, be able to understand the spatial orientation better than the 2d structure shown in the book so let's uh, uh, try to figure out uh, the case in this molecule so in this molecule we have a ring or cyclic alkene and cyclic alkene is horizont in the horizontal plane. The chloro molecule is vertically above the plane and hydrogen is vertically below the plane. And if we assign the priorities, we will see that carbon is number one priority and the carbon atom connected with a double bond is a number two priority because this is carbon, carbon, and hydrogen. And the third, this carbon atom gets number three priority and hydrogen gets number four priority. Now, according to rules, number four priority should be away from us. But in this case, 
number three is away from us because it's a horizontal plane so it means we need to rotate the molecule in this direction towards us so that carbon comes towards us and hydrogen goes away from us and when we do that we end up getting this structure and in this structure you can we can see that number one is towards us and number four this is number four that's away from us and now if we go from number one to number two to number three it's a clockwise rotation see one easy way to remember is that if you write r so you have to go clockwise and if you write s you have to go anti-clockwise so anti-clockwise is S and clockwise is R. So therefore it is a R isomer. So therefore its name should be R in brackets or parentheses 3-chlorocyclohexene. Now in this example, fortunately, number four priority is already away from us. Uh, therefore, if we go from one to two to three, it's again clockwise. So this molecule will also be the R. So it's R mevalonic acid. Many times chemical structures will be given to you in which after assigning priorities you will find that the number four priority is not away from you if it's not away from you you cannot assign the r or s configuration to that molecule so in those cases you have to orient the molecule in such a way that uh, the number four priority group goes away from you rotating the molecule in your mind or imagining the rotation of molecule in your mind can be quite tricky so I'm gonna go over a method in which this process becomes relatively easier so let me uh, write an example in which the chiral center has priority number four not away from you so for example we may have a molecule such as this one in this case uh, the chiral center as you can see uh, will not have a priority number four away from us let's first assign the priorities again highest priority goes to the atom which has highest atomic number which would be chlorine so chlorine get number one priority after chlorine the next highest atomic number belongs to oxygen so this gets number two priority okay, so now we have methyl on this side and ethyl on this side so methyl is c h and h uh, sorry so this is so methyl group is ch3 so it's can so this carbon is connected to hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen in ethyl there's a carbon ch2 and then ch3 here so this carbon is connected to another carbon hydrogen and hydrogen as you can see this one gets the priority because carbon is a higher atomic number so therefore priority number three goes to this side and priority number four goes to this side all right so let me clean this up one more time and let me write this molecular structure one more time instead of writing uh, the actual uh, atoms i'm just gonna write the priority so this is priority number two that's priority number one and we said this is priority number four and this is priority number three now you we can clearly see that the number one priority is away from us and number four is within the plane that is not what we want so we want this molecule to tumble or spin in such a way or rotate in such a way that the number four goes away from you so if you can imagine in your uh, mind go ahead that will work but i will explain a better and easier method and that method is 
that we can switch the lowest priority which is number four this is the lowest priority with the uh, group which is away from us it means number four goes here and number one comes here right so when we make this switch we will end up number one priority here and number four priority here the rest remains the same for now right so that's number three according to the rules or these are rules of geometry that these are not written rules that if you make a switch once and if you so that's not the same molecule anymore because we made the switch but if you make the switch between the other two the first uh, switch uh, effect cancels out so it means once you made the switch with number four with number one um, and if you make the switch with the other two also then essentially the molecule becomes the same what we started with but the difference will be that the number four priority now will be away from us and that's what we wanted it means number three will be on this side number two number two will be here and number one will be here and now we can plug in the values if you want uh, so number one was uh, chlorine and number two was oh and number three was ethyl group and number four was methyl group so that's number one that's number two that's number three and number four as we can see so essentially in this process i just rotated the molecule from here to here and uh, i ended up in a perfect uh, orientation in which number four is away from us and now if i go from number one to uh, number three I can see it's a clockwise so therefore it's a S enantiomer assigning R and S configuration is easy as long as we master uh, giving priorities and how to rotate the molecule so that the number four priority is away from us as long as we can understand that concept rest of the uh, problem is extremely easy earlier we learned that if in a molecule we have one chiral center it will give rise to uh, uh, two uh, enantiomers or in other words pair of enantiomers it is possible that uh, we may have more than one chiral center in a molecule so it means that if uh, it has more than one chiral center it will have multiple pair of enantiomers now all those enantiomers uh, or all those pair of enantiomers are not going to be mirror images of uh, all of each other right so therefore we call them stereoisomers because there will be some form of stereoisomers of each other so the general formula is that for a molecule with n number of chiral centers it will have 2 to the n stereoisomers for example if i have this molecule Now in this molecule, I have two chiral centers, number one chiral center here and number two chiral center here. So overall, this molecule will give me two to the two, four stereoisomers. Or in other words, I'm gonna get a pair of, a pair of enantiomer from here, from this and another pair of enantiomer 
from the second one. So total four. But it is not as simple as it looks like because if we have more than two stereo uh, uh, chiral centers, then we get multiple, multiple sets of, uh, of stereo isomers. For example, for three chiral center, n equals three, we will get two to the three equals eight um, stereo isomers. And the number of stereo isomers uh, increases a lot uh, if we have more than three uh, chiral centers. Let's consider an example of 2,3,4 trihydroxyl uh, butanol. The structure of uh, this molecule is shown here. And as we can see, this molecule has two chiral centers, so number one chiral center and number two chiral center. So by definition or by the formula, it should have four stereoisomers. Now we know that stereoisomers are those isomers in which the three-dimensional orientation of groups are different. So in number one, both hydrogens are on left-hand side and both hydroxyl groups are on right hand side. Now one spatial arrangement is possible when both OH groups are on left hand side and both hydrogens are on left hand side. This case is such that that number two this one is mirror image of number one. So therefore these two are pair of enantiomers. A third possibility is when the top OH group is on right hand side and the bottom OH group is on left hand side. So this is number three possibility in which the orientation of groups can be different. So number three is different from number one as well as number two. Number three is not mirror image of either number one or number two. So this number one and number three, they are stereoisomers because spatial orientation is different. However, they are not mirror images. So those stereoisomers which are not mirror images are known as diastereomers. It means number one and number three are diastereomers of each other. And similarly number two and number three will also be diastereomers of each other. But number one and number two are mirror images. Similarly there's another possibility in which the top OH group is on the left hand side and the bottom OH group is on the right hand side. So number, let's call this number four. As we can see that number four is the mirror image of number three. So therefore number three and number four are another pair of enantiomers. So it means in this case we have two pair of enantiomers but those two pairs are diastereomers of each other. Let's take a look at another molecule which has two chiral centers. So it is 2,3-dihydroxybutanedioic acid. The common name of this compound is tartaric acid. The structure of tartaric acid is shown here. Again, because it has two chiral centers as shown here and here, these two carbons, therefore, by definition, it must have four stereoisomers and these four stereoisomers are shown uh, in this uh, uh, picture. So first two they look like mirror images of each other. Ignore this red uh, part here for now and this two is another pair of um, enantiomers. So total four. However, if we pay closer attention to the first pair of uh, enantiomers, these two, number one and number two, they possess a plane of symmetry in the middle. And we learn in the beginning of this chapter, any molecule or any object, if it possesses a plane of symmetry, it is not chiral anymore. In other words, uh, these two, in fact, are same identical molecule. They are not non-superimposable. They are imposable 
images of each other although they look like a mirror image but they are same molecule so those compounds or those molecules which possess more than one uh, chiral center uh, but are achiral in fact because of the presence of plane of symmetry so these kind of compounds are known as meso compounds so number one and number two are essentially the same molecule so together is we're gonna, just gonna call it number one however the other two is correct so th these two are pair of an isomer. so this molecule it's supposed to have four stereoisomers but because it possesses a plane of symmetry it ends up only with three stereoisomers and these kind of compounds are known as uh, meso compounds so to recap uh, in chirality or uh, we may have pair of enantiomers so pair of enantiomers are known superimposable mirror images of each other or we may have diastereomers diastereomers are stereoisomers but they are not mirror images of each other and finally we have meso compounds meso compounds are achiral but they possess more than two chiral centers so at least two or more than uh, two or more chiral centers but themselves they become achiral because they have a plane of symmetry so meso compounds always have a plane of symmetry in them just for practice uh, we are uh, let's uh, uh, give uh, the R and S configuration to uh, these molecules we can calculate all we need to do is figure out the priorities so I'm just gonna give priorities straight away you already know the rules so first we go with the highest priority so because there are two chiral centers so we're gonna name them separately so first I'm going to assign the configuration to this carbon, this one. Uh, okay, let me erase it. Uh, so let's assign priority. So highest priority goes to OH group because that's the number uh, that has the highest um, uh, atomic number. So that's number one priority and hydrogen is number four. Now we have to decide between the COOH and this C both are carbons but because this carbon is connected to oxygen and this carbon is connected to an oxygen and another carbon and another hydrogen however this carbon is connected to all three oxygens therefore this carbon wins the priority uh, phrase so this is number two and then this is number three now priorities are set now number four is not away from us so let's switch this with this one so I will end up number two here and number four away from me and number one is already here and number three is here because I already made one switch so I have to make another switch so it means now my number one is here and number two sorry number three is here so now if I go from one to two to three it is anti-clockwise therefore it must be s so this kind of calculation you do on the side on a scratch paper okay so therefore this is s the configuration of this is s similarly if i now calculate the uh, r and s configuration of the second carbon again i have to give priorities so let's uh, assign priorities again oh will get number one priority uh, this will get number four priority and cooh as i explained earlier will get number two and the top all of top will get number three so now again my number four is not away from me number two is away so let's make the switch number four goes here and number two so I will end up number four here and number two is here after making the switch so number three was here and number 
one is here so because i made one switch so therefore i have to make another switch so after making the other switch now my number three will be here and number one will be here so once my priorities are set number four is away from me so if i go this way again it's one to two to three again it's uh, anti-clockwise that this is also s so it means my second carbon here is also s you can calculate same way the priority uh, r and s configuration of uh, this molecule but the easier method is that if one enantiomer has s the other enantiomer will have r so because this is s this uh, carbon is S, so therefore this carbon will be R. Similarly, this carbon was S, so the mirror image of this carbon will be R. You can calculate it, you can apply the priorities and uh, figure it out, but once you do, you will see that this will come out to be R.